there were multiple systematic efforts to interfere in our election. And that allegation deserves the attention of every American. Yeah, that's what uh, Robert Mueller said. Uh, but the question now is, you know, when he said the, quote, central allegation of the Mueller report was right there. But tonight, the Real Clear Politics Investigations team seriously questioning that statement by the former special counsel, writing that those findings are, quote, undercut by investigative shortcomings and conflicts of interest. Specifically, the fact that the Mueller team relied on a, quote, private contractor for the Democratic National Committee. So what could this mean for Robert Mueller, who 12 days from now will appear live before Congress and the American people testifying to explain his report? Here now, live John Sale. He is an assistant special prosecutor back from Watergate, uh, now a private counsel down in Miami. John, good to have you tonight. Thanks for having me. Ed. Let's start with this real clear investigation. What does this tell us that a contractor for the DNC help determine for Robert Mueller who was behind the hacking and all of that? Well, I think that's called crowd strike, and it was a private vendor subsidized by the DNC. But uh, Ed, the Mueller report is, is not, although in two volumes, is not like uh, Moses coming down with the two tablets. It is not sacred. It is not, it's something that can be challenged. It's a one-sided document, like any prosecutor's report. And this investigation is showing the shortcomings. And I think the Mueller testimony will be an opportunity for the Congress to try to demonstrate the shortcomings and the bias in the report. I have a prediction. <clears throat> Excuse me. My prediction is they're going to be very frustrated. They're going to find that Mueller is not going to answer questions. He'll probably invoke a privilege that Eric Holder invoked called the deliberative process yeah. privilege. And I just don't think we're going to get any answers. Well, in fact, when he had that news conference a couple months back, Robert Mueller, we played a clip from there uh, on the way in. He specifically said, this is it. This is as far as I am going to go. Was that a signal to those very lawmakers, particularly the Democrats, who want to push him maybe into saying bad things about the president, that he's not going to go f further than what he actually put into writing? Well, it sounds like more than a signal. He explicitly said it. However, there's something else that he said, which very few people are replaying in clips. He said even people who he charged who have not pled guilty mm -hmm. are presumed innocent. That presumption of innocence should prevent him from talking about any third party because they're not there to respond when their reputations are at stake. So and would that include the president? another reason. Get to that Absolutely. reason in a minute, but would that include the president? People in his inner circle, they're not there at this hearing to defend themselves. That's my point, that that's why he should not talk about them. And in addition to that, uh, he, the shortcomings of his investigation, he's not going to want to uh, talk about publicly. So let's go back uh, to um, the crowdsourcing and CrowdStrike. Uh, why in the world would Robert Mueller, a special counsel who, as I recall, uh, had a special clearance. He could talk to anybody he wanted in the government, outside the government. They had all those many hundreds of subpoenas and all the rest. Why would he rely on a contractor for the DNC, which obviously was also behind the anti-Trump dossier? Why would they be used as a key source here in determining what the Russians did? Well, not only did they do the forensics, but they also provided redacted materials, which they decided what would be redacted. Uh, these are questions that just demonstrate his report has not been challenged. There's not been any cross-examination. The president supplied over a million documents. Mm -hmm. Let's take Don McGahn. They include certain things McGahn said, but McGahn was interviewed for 30 hours. Right. What about all the things that they did not include in the report? Absolutely. Last question then. The Democrats, we know where they're going at this hearing with Mueller that's coming up in a few days. The Republicans, will they finally have a chance to basically cross-examine Mueller? They're going to have that chance, but I don't think he's going to answer. And I just don't think that uh, it's going to be a big disappointment. But I do think that the big bombshell is not going to come from Mueller. It's going to come eventually when the attorney general and uh, Durham complete their investigation. That's his, the U.S. attorney really from Connecticut the that brought in. Yeah. That's right, who is a total straight shooter, has been appointed by various attorney generals to do investigations, and then we're going to get some answers. There's not going to be any privilege. It's going to be just some straight talk. Well, we've been waiting for accountability on that. We'll see how it plays out in the days ahead. John Sale, we appreciate you coming in tonight. Thanks for having me.